All right, everybody, we have uh, our last leg day of our volume series. So you've made it to day number 58 in volume. I'm just going to be using one heavy kettlebell. I have a 44 pound, about 20 kilogram. Um, so grab whatever you have. You can also hold two mid weight dumbbells if you would like to just kind of add weight. And uh, we're going to focus on quite a lot of reps, high volume for our legs. So let's go ahead and start on the ground on our hands and knees. And we'll go through some cat cow. We're gonna make sure that we have our backs nice and revved up and worked out and mobile and ready to go. So focus that inhale as you open the chest and let your belly drop. And then really focus your exhale as you pull your stomach in as tight as you can, build some heat in the core. Back to your inhale, exhale, super big round. Last one, inhale, and then exhale. Find a neutral spine and let your hips hinge to the right and hinge to the left. Back to the right and back to the left. And then curl your toes under for me, sit back on your heels. Plant your hands on your thighs and round your back again. Just get a little round through that spine. Pull the belly button back and let the bottoms of your feet get a nice little stretch. And then come back forward, hands and knees. We're gonna take our left leg forward outside the left hand, and then we're just gonna thread forward and back. So nothing really strong, long hold, just a little bit of a thread through. Get that hamstring opening up. We're gonna be starting off with 10 reps of a weighted glute bridge and then 10 reps of a kneeling thrust. And we're gonna go for five rounds. All right, hold yourself forward and just kind of bounce. Get that hip flexor, open it up, and then we'll switch to the other side. So we wanna get those hamstrings open and kind of lengthen just a teeny bit. Nothing super long. You don't wanna hold a stretch before your workout. Static stretching is not the best idea. It lengthens and weakens the muscle, and we want to save that for the end. But a little bit of a ballistic kind of pull like this, waking it up, gearing it up to get used is a good idea. All right, sink forward, and then just kind of bounce those hips. All right, let's head back to our hands and knees, and I'm going to have us go through a little bit of a hip mobility. So grab deep into the core, slide your shoulder blades down, flex up underneath your rib cage, but you should still be able to maintain a flat back. Grab through your pelvic floor, and then you're gonna flex your right foot, keep your knee at 90 degrees, and just kick straight up, drop straight down. So the goal here is to make sure that your pelvis stays level, that as you lift your leg, your hips don't swing to the side. Five, four, three, keep that core solid, two, hold it up in place, and then we're gonna circle out and around, up, out and around, up, out and around, one more. All right, other side, make sure that core is set, keep that 90 degree angle, grabbing into the glute, into that hamstring, holding flexion through the core and balancing through that pelvis. I'm already building heat, you should be too, because you're flexed up, I'm trying to hold that body still in space. Okay, last one, hold it up, and then swing it out, in, down, and around, up, out, down, in, down, and around, up, Open out, one more, perfect. All right, we're gonna head down to the ground into our first set of our weighted glute bridges. If you wanna go body weight, of course, that is always an option. Weighted glute bridges, the hardest part is figuring out where you wanna hold the weight on your pelvis or abdomen. 
traditionally this is done with a barbell, but we're gonna just use our kettlebell for our purposes today. We're taking our time. We're flexing big flex at the top or making sure to hold the core. Pop it up, hold, split second. There's 10. Okay, slide forward. And we're gonna do our kneeling thrust. So you're gonna go onto your hands or onto your knees. See if you can get the tops of your feet onto the ground. Grab your weight, hold it up at the chest. Lock into the core. So it's basically a kneeling deadlift. One. Open those hip flexors at the top. Grip and grab through those glutes. Get those glutes firing. You should feel a lot of flexion in the core as well. Nine. 10. All right. Back down. There's set one. We have four to go. Make sure that those knees are pinching toward one another without actually touching. Use those glutes to lift. Nine, uh, 10. You should not be feeling anything in the low back. If you are, chances are it's what's going on with the pelvis. So keep your hips tucked in. Here we go. There's a reason it's called a thruster. Thrust, it's not just a lift, you pop. Seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Awesome, two sets down, three to go. There we go, lock into that belly. Learn to make small little adjustments, small little tweaks to get the work more focused where you want it. Two more. Can you flex your core any deeper? Ooh. My booty's on fire. That's what I want. Here we go. Locked core. Perfect. We're building that powerhouse. We need the glutes. A lot of us have a really hard time recruiting the glutes. So hopefully you're building awareness, finding the flex and build for the super important 
powerhouse <sighs> muscle group in the glutes. Five. Ten. Flip it over. Here we go. Bottom of the fourth. I'm feeling these reps adding up super good. Double check your core. Last one here. Perfect. Last set. Flex it in. Keep it. Firm. Three. Feel like you're digging those heels into the ground. Open the chest. Eight. Nine. Ten. Okay, last set, kneeling thrusters. <clears throat> Sit it back, feel like your thighs are wrapping away from each other and then tucking in at the top. Perfect. Woo. All right. Get that puppy slid out to the side. Let's go through a couple of our cat cows. Let's go for four. Inhale and then exhale. Make sure. Big, big, big round. Feel that low belly grab. So the more that you can exhale, the further exhale that you can get, the more deep internal ab grab you can get. This is three. Last one. Four. All right, bring that right leg forward. We're going to slide in three. Get that hamstring. Two. And one. Okay, switch to the other side. Three, two, and one. All right, that was a good warm up round. Now we're gonna enjoy holding no weight. We're gonna hit a set of squat jacks. So holding on to our squat position and jumping in and out. Make sure you jump from your hip flexors, your hip joint, not just your knees. We're gonna go for 20. Not focused as much about speed as I am my depth and getting those hips to open. Hit your heels when you're wide, toes when you're narrow. All right, hinge forward, bend your left knee, and then your right. Okay, our next set, our next block, 
are 10 squats and 10 deadlifts. Before we go into our squat, we're gonna take a low ancestral squat and get those hips open and low. So I've been noticing in almost all my clientele, whether they're 14 or whether they're 60, that getting low like this with your heels on the ground is very difficult. So it's something that you need to be working toward, okay? So if you can't get all the way down with your heels on the ground, open your knees a little wider. And if one heel comes up, that's fine. So my right heel's up, left heel down, switch to the other side. So rock back and forth here. Maybe you can also, and I couldn't do this mm, four years ago maybe, but I wanted to, I knew it was healthy. And I listened to like a three hour podcast on how good it was for my back and hips. <laughs> And I actually, if I have any knee trouble, it helps my knees too. Okay, so I started out by grabbing my weight in front to help my butt not fall backwards. So you can try that also. All right, so go ahead and come up from there. We're gonna start off with our squats. 10 squats. Toes straight ahead. Sit your hips back and down. I'm gonna try to get my butt nice and low. So you're only going so low as you can keep your heels on the ground. And you feel the glutes push you up. Eight. Nine, push that butt back, 10. Okay, now we're gonna go deadlift. Toes under the hips, straight ahead. If you struggle with your low back, then you can keep your feet wider. It's okay that it's not super heavy. We're just reinforcing the posterior chain all along the back side of the body, strengthening, soft knees, make sure your back is flat. So the weight is pulling those shoulders together and rounding them, and you're resisting. 10, perfect. Set one, sink low, take that swift, twist, twist, <laughs> side to side if you'd like. Okay, <clears throat> let's go set two. You got it. Ten. Here we go. One. Again, we get that thrust. See if you can get the same glute activation that you got from your kneeling thrusters. Eight, nine, grab that belly, 10. They're set two. All right, sink it in. Take that little squat. If you're up here, that's fine. Get those hips low, get them open, push those knees out. All right, back to our squats. If you need to hold the bell low, that's fine, but it definitely challenges you more to keep your goblet squat. Uh, 
Deadlifts. Inhale down. Exhale up. Get your hip flexors open. Nine. Ten. As you hinge forward on those, Check in with your pelvis. So as you hinge, try not to lose your pelvis and let it wink forward. Keep it set with your shoulders. I actually had to fix my last couple. So I had to just pull the tailbone teeny bit tucked under. And that made my back light up here grabbing in instead of low. All right, kids, set four. You're doing great, we have two sets to go. Same thing here with the pelvis, line it up with those shoulders. Pull your belly button back as you hinge down. Okay, take a break. Sink it down. Breaks accommodate a better set. Sometimes, depending on the style of work, we want to float straight into our next set, go quick transition. But this today, lots of sets, lots of rounds, getting heavier. We need that break to facilitate a better set. Hitting quick transitions and then getting sloppy is not helpful. You have to think of your ultimate goal, how you're applying how you're executing. Last set. Feel those heels screw into the ground. Feel that core build. Feeling like I'm in a plank, flexing that abdomen all the way around. Here we go. Eight. Nine. Perfect. Strong, feel strong, but tired. It's exactly what we want. All right, squat jacks, sink it in for 20.
All right, let's take it down back into our hip flexor to start. So start narrow with your lunge and then tuck hip under, lift your arm, slide forward. Keep tucking through the hips. Get that pull. All right, set your hands down, lift your back knee and kick it a little further back and then sink those hips again. Just a little different style of a hip flexor pull. Get that grab. All right, let's find our heart rate, or I mean our breath, sorry. Pull the toes up, pull your right hip forward and the left hip back if your left leg is forward. Deep inhale, hold at the top and then exhale as long as possible through the mouth. Deep inhale and hold, exhale. One more round, deep inhale, hold, exhale. Okay, let's hit up that pigeon. Cross your foot to the other side of the mat. Drop the outer edge of your shin on the ground, pulling your left toe back. And then you take it wherever you're at. I am not all the way down at this point, that's okay. Some days, you're a little more flexible than others. And then as your body loosens, maybe you can get all the way down. Feel free to kind of twist into that back hip using your arms. Okay, let's take three rounds of that breath cycle again. So inhale as far as you can through your nose. Hold it at the top and then exhale out your mouth. Two more. Last one. All right. Fold your back leg in. Just come into a little Z sit on your mat. Lean forward. And then we're going to go to the other side. Now our right leg comes forward. Starting with that lunge, the short lunge. I'm going to show you this way. Tuck those hips, slide in. Bring the left arm up. Lean it over. There takes, in order to get that big pull here, which we need so badly, everybody, tight hip flexors, pretty sure you've got to really tuck the pelvis under. Feel like you're pulling your belly button back in a little arch. Feel like you're tugging your tailbone under, like you have a tail, you're tucking it through the legs. Ah, okay, take that front leg forward, lift your back knee. Sink in here. Let's take our breath, three rounds. Hold at the top. Again. Last one. All right, pigeon. Flex that right foot back and then just slowly walk the back knee until you can get your hips parallel to the ground. Three cycles of your breath.
When you exhale, slow through your mouth. Feel the tension release in that hip. All right, and then our Z sit. I'm just gonna fold in. So I'm being rude, my back to you. One foot in, one foot out. Lean forward, stretch through that hip. All right, I wanna challenge you to stay working every day on that low squat. Another way to do it is to find a pole or post, walk your hands down, sit back, see how low you can get. You'll feel stretch through the knees, the calves, the ankles, hips, back. It's awesome. Great work, everybody. See you tomorrow. Finish strong.